Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Every day, I bring you breaking AI news, diving into the implications it has in your life and business. If you're interested in sponsoring the podcast and getting your company in front of thousands of AI enthusiasts every day, there's an email in the description. Finally, make sure you are on the wait list for the AI Box platform, a tool we are building to allow you to automate virtually any task with AI tools. Find it at AIbox.ai. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. A really interesting report just came out about the U.S. military's use of AI to predict what their enemies are going to do. So on today's podcast, we'll be talking about some military applications for AI, what this new report from the U.S. about the U.S. military says, and also some very interesting reports about the U.K. using AI to try to disrupt um, Russia's strategic military uh, imports and exports, I believe. So we're going to dive into it without further ado. So I think in reality, the big news here is that the U.S. Army is turning to AI to really kind of forecast enemy movement. So they are revealing a very ambitious project known as real-time threat forecasting. This thing sounds straight out of a sci-fi movie. You know, you've seen those movies where essentially they predict who's going to commit a crime and then you get captured before you even commit the crime because they predicted that you were going to do it. It feels very, very similar to this, except, um, right, obviously it's a military predicting what threats are going to happen ahead of time, which is a a very useful um, tool in theory, in practice. Man, it just startles me to to think like, you know, we would shoot a missile at someone because we know they're about to shoot a missile at us or something like that. I don't know if that's the, how does it actually get applied, but you know, that's the worry that I would have. And I'm sure other people would have in any case. Well, the reason I would be a worry is just in case the other person didn't actually, or wasn't actually going to shoot that missile. And then you shoot it for nothing. And you're the one that's the aggressor starting the, the skirmish that accelerates something, or perhaps two AIs predict that the other AI, because right, we're, we're using the AI right now to predict, but maybe we have an adversary in China or in Russia or in some other country and their AI predicts we're going to attack them and our AI predicts that we're going to attack them and then all of a sudden the AIs are fighting and yeah it just sounds like a dystopian future but whatever in any case when we when let's get back to the innovative part of it I think the innovation seems to uh really like essentially the system aims to rapidly process a mountain of data that is beyond human capacity to really predict and then um conventionally revise enemy activities so I think in line with this, a recent request for information, which is a RFI, has been issued, um, and it is encouraging industry collaboration. So I think the Future Forward system will likely be rooted in AI and needs to be functional on everyday laptops. So using um, evolving AI or machine learning technology. Beyond this initiative, I think there is a concern that human intelligence analysts might be overwhelmed by the increasingly intricate landscape of warfare. And based off of what the military is currently saying, they really visualize the future battleground um, as a whole bunch of robots, autonomous systems, AI-enabled deceptions, soldier machine teams, and self-organized intelligence networks. So reflecting on the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war, where Armenia's traditional tanks, I also know and apologize for butchering the the, uh, pronunciation, of that, but um, essentially, Armenia's traditional tanks were completely decimated by Azerbaijan's advanced drones, um, and the every evolving drone warfare that we see in Ukraine. I think, based off of all of that, I think it's really clear that the military has to adopt um, and adapt very, con- very quickly. They have to adopt AI, and they have to adapt quickly. Now, of course, I've already mentioned, you know, the fact that I think a lot of this is quite dystopian but regardless um i think it's going to happen so the u.s military intelligence i think can no longer really bank on an enemy following a consistent modus operandi um so i think this is you know essentially meaning they're not going to follow the same pattern over and over again i think this is going to complicate um things in the in the military aspect a lot i think this is going to be complicated by an overflow of global intelligence 
um, which essentially is being harvested from a whole bunch of different sources, you know, air, land, sea, we have space sensors, there's human intelligence. I think the amount of data that's being collected from satellites and all sorts of other objects right now make it so that really whoever harnesses that data, like everyone has a lot of very complex data harvesting systems and whoever can um, use that and uh, and apply um, apply that data the quickest, I think is going to be the winner. And so I think just the sheer volume of drone imagery collected um, completely outstrips analysts' capacity to actually dissect it. Um, and I think this really points to an increasing reliance on AI. I've, I've personally spoken to um, friends that have previously been in the military that have worked with AI in the military, um, ones that have worked with drones. And it was interesting, you know, just talking to people about the about the impact of drones alone on the military and, um, you know, what a game changer that was, not having to call in a helicopter or not having to call in, um, you know, a spy aircraft to go fly over an object, but being able to just fly a drone and get like really high definition imagery of where snipers or other people are. I think it makes a big impact. But, you know, inevitably, we're going to have so much data that uh, just having analysts is going to be a struggle. And so being able to, um, you know, fly a thousand drones around an enemy base and have AI detect what the hot targets are and, um, you know, the best ways to disable artillery or other things, I think is going to be an inevitable outcome of that. So I think um, what's interesting is video game tech could actually be pretty instrumental in this whole AI-centric approach. Um, I think that would offer 3D visualization technologies and techniques for a really consistent, updated a projection of threats. So using commercial video games, I think would actually simplify the interface learning curve, unlike, you know, current defense department systems, which can take months to master. This is, you know, an idea that a lot of people have floated um, to, to kind of bring those two together in a way. But at the same time, the idea of, you know, substituting human officers with AI, I don't think, you know, isn't without its challenges. I think some of the roles might be offloaded to machines that the military might do and that officers might do. But I think that there are stumbling blocks um, that the military uh, intelligence staff may lack, you know, comprehensive data access for AI to operate, you know, optimally. And I think that was actually revealed um, by a 2021 RUSI report. So Meanwhile, across the pond, as it were, um, Britain's M116 spy agency has begun utilizing AI to disrupt critical weapon supply chains to Russia. This is another really interesting use case of AI that has come out that's in the headlines recently. So the chief, uh, the chief of M16, which is Richard Moore, he really applauded these efforts during a speech at the British embassy in Prague. And Moore believes that AI will um, augment, not replace human judgment. So his teams are using AI to really kind of work with uh, the current agents that are out on the field and the work that they're doing. I think this is a really interesting use case of AI, of course, using it for, uh, we knew that it would inevitably become, come to the intelligence agencies, right? It'd be used for spying and for other things, disrupting um, adversaries and whatnot. And I think, you know, a lot of people are applauding this like it's good. And I can see that on the one hand, perhaps if this is, you know, helping your cause. But at the end of the day, the thing that I think of is the fact that uh, if you have access to this kind of technology, inevitably your adversaries will also have access to it. And so it's kind of a, a zero sums game, in my opinion. It's like if someone was applauding the fact that we developed a nuclear bomb because now we're the most powerful. Well, eventually, you know, every other adversary we had developed nuclear bombs. And uh, there's obviously a lot of ethical dilemmas that come with that. And so I think at the end of the day, um, and I know people think I'm like, you've been using hyperbole or exaggerating, but like this isn't an exaggeration. When we're talking about the use of AI um, in the military, I think specifically there is some pretty massive implications um, for this and, you know, use it for intelligence and whatnot. So it's going to be an interesting area to follow. I, you know, at the end of the day, I wish that there was a uh, no AI in the military uh, rule. I mean, I really wish there was no war in the world, but this is not a perfect world. We do not get to wish for whatever we want to avoid all conflicts in the world. Um, as much as that would be amazing, it's not going to happen. So I think at the end of the day, we really just have to focus on developing the most powerful technology, the most powerful software. Um, and I think this is going to be a very interesting space to follow. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. 
That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate us wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure to check out our Discord channel and Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can share software tools and prompts we're using in AI every day. I'll leave a link for those in the description below. Thank you.